Hey guys, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we're going to be making some Christmas ornaments out of some random molds that I have and just to see if we can make some cute fun things. So before we get started though, I want to just say thank you to everybody who looked at my last video and commented um, where I was kind of talking about this new video format that I wanted to experiment with and see how it worked out. And, you know, the fact that it was more of a kind of a live video where I'm not doing a voiceover, I'm actually talking to you um, as I'm working, which is a bit of a change from what I was doing before. And overwhelmingly, everyone seemed to really like the idea of it as well. And actually didn't mind that the video was a little bit longer than my typical videos. And I was really happily surprised and appreciative of that because I think this is going to be a really fun way of of um, for me to teach you what I'm doing and so you guys can see my process I can explain things a bit more as I'm going along so I'm really happy that you guys like that and uh, so hopefully we'll continue with this for a bit see how we go and you know I'll tweak things as we go along and you let me know what you think um, as the videos come out as well so all right so to get started um, I had these molds and they're already cured um, I've already poured resin and they've cured in them and um, in, I'm actually going to include on the video here a clip of the pouring video just so you can see I didn't do anything too special with the pour they were just basic pours I did use my counterculture artist thin resin for these and basically they're just filled with different types of glitter so for the snowflake ones the bottom here you'll see that I actually brushed in some mica powder um, into the mold a bit first just to kind of see if it's going to give us a different look. So I used Daniel Baresi's Moonstone Powder in Blue and it has a really neat shine to it so I'm hoping that it's going to do something really neat with the um, the engravings that are inside these snowflake molds. So I used that and then I just poured um, this Larissi mix. So this mix actually has hearts and stars and fine glitters in them. It's really pretty and it has that blue tint. So all three of these actually had the same uh, glitter mix in it. And then for the two, uh, the flower and the shell, I actually mixed four <laughs> different glitters just for fun to see how they would turn out. So I have a couple here from Paradise Glitter and I have like just a fine glitter here, which is one of my favorites actually, Diva. It just, it's such a neat mix and it's so pretty. And then I have this one here, which is their like super chunky, like it has, um, it has a mix of some other things in there too, but it's mostly chunky. So I have those in the iridescence and then two from Larissi. One is, it's like these little stars and this one has snowflakes. So um, yeah, so I mixed these four together and I just poured them in. And as you can see in the video as well, that um, when you're working with these type of molds that you need to pour inside and make sure the resin's getting all the way down to the bottom edges, I just use my popsicle stick to kind of just push it down to just kind of encourage the resin to go down. And once the resin's down in that area, generally it will kind of fill the gaps. So we just want to make sure we're doing that, especially when you have, you know, little corners like this and even the little corners on this mold here. So just wanted to make sure we're doing that. And then once it's in there, it should be fine. And then lastly, I already mentioned with the, that I had the glitter from this one, from these ones into here. This is my arabesque mold that I recently posted um, some ornaments that I made on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen this shape already and it made some really cute ornaments as well. So I'll show you what I did for that as well. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unmold these, see how they look, and then we'll decide what we're going to do to decorate them. So let's start with our snowflakes. So this one here, I didn't fill the mold. You can see here, I didn't fill the mold because it's a very deep mold. I think it's meant for soaps, but I didn't need to fill it all that way. So I only went about halfway. So in this mold here, this one and this one, I probably only poured about an ounce to maybe an ounce and a half of, of resin in here. So it definitely didn't fill the mold by any means, but it gave it, a, gave it a nice depth for an ornament. So we have, and you can see here, that is the design of the mold and then this is how it turned out it's so cute so you can see a little bit of the reflection i don't know if it comes on camera a little bit of the reflection of that moonstone 
along the edges because I really just painted it inside those grooves there. Not so much in the middle, but along the edges here. So you can kind of see that. So it looks cute. I don't plan on doing too much with the two snowflakes besides just this basic pour. I'll just drill a hole in them and then add a little string. And then those um, are pretty much perfect as they are for um, hanging on a tree. So we have that one. And then we have this one. You can see how that looks in the mold. And oh, this one actually looks really cute. You can really see the moon powder, uh, the moonstone powder on this one, especially along the edges here. So there you go. So again, same thing. I'm probably not going to do anything else with this because it just looks pretty as it is. And I'll just drill a hole and then um, add a string or a little ribbon in there for hanging. So those two turned out super cute. So those are the really easy ones. I just wanted to kind of try out these new molds that I got and uh, I found them online. I'm going to have to look up where, um, which site I found them on. I don't remember off the top of my head. So I'm going to have to uh, just look in at the end of the video, at the end screen or near the end, I put um, a full list of the products that I used and also in the description under the YouTube video, check there as well, because I do list everything there as well. But I also, if you scroll down a little bit more, um, I also include links when I have them and discount codes when I have them. So you can definitely check down there and I'll actually give you a little bit more information as well. So anyway, so those are our snowflakes. So I'll put those two aside. Um, this Arab, this is an arabesque mold. So this one, again, I found on Etsy. I'll link the Etsy maker for this as well. And I got a little bit of excess on here. I'll trim that off. But again, you can see just how pretty that Larissi glitter is. It's just awesome how pretty it is within reflection. So in terms of cutting off that excess, I'm just gonna, for me, I just use my X-Acto knife to just kind of zip those off really fast. So there we go. And there, so we have that. This one we'll be adding some designs to. Um, like I said, if you saw my Instagram, uh yesterday or on friday um it will show you the design that, or kind of the idea of what we're doing with those so we have that and again i'll be adding a, a hole uh, just with a drill on this one here i believe the mold that she has now on her website has um the little um it, it the hole is included in the mold so this way you don't actually have to drill it i had originally chose this one just because i case in case i want to use the um you know the resin pieces for something else other than ornaments. I chose the one with no hole so I can drill the hole if I need to, but I believe the one she has now does have the little peg for the hole. So, so we have that. And then we have our two, uh, our flower and our shell. So we'll do our flower first. Just get in under there. Nope. Nope. It doesn't want to. Oh, there we go. So. There we go. So how cute is that little dish? So I think these are meant to be little trinket dishes and this is a, a flower shape. I think it's a Sakura shape, um, but anyways, it's a little flower shape. And again, it looks so cute with all the different glitters in there. You can kind of see how they reflect. So we have our little flower here. And then my seashell. I recently did this, uh, th poured this shell as in purple glitter and I posted it as a reel on Instagram and everybody just loves it because it reminds them of the Little Mermaid. It was just so cute to see all the responses for it. And uh, it's a really cute mold. So as you can see, same thing. It just looks super cute with all those little glitters in there. So, all right, so there we go. So we have our pieces unmolded now and then we're ready to uh, make them look like little cute ornaments. So we're going to start with our arabesque mold here and um, so originally when I chose the glitter for this and you'll get a little sneak peek into my <laughs> my process here but um, I originally decided I was going to match it up to this uh, washi tape um, for the center. So this was my idea that I was actually going to use here and it does still look cute but it's funny how sometimes after you actually get the piece unmolded that maybe it's not exactly 
what she thought it was going to be. I mean, this would still look nice, but then I'm also thinking that this one here would actually look nice as well, specifically this section. Um, this is a washi tape that I actually used on one of the pieces that I posted on Instagram. Actually, let me grab that for you. Give me one second. So these are the ones that I actually posted to Instagram. So you'll see that I had a few different designs and each one has a different washi tape as well as the background color. But overall, the designs are the same otherwise, but you can see the different looks you can get just by changing out, you know, that glitter and the washi tape. So we have these two here, and then this is the one that's very similar to what we're going to be making today. So the glitter is different, but the um, the washi tape in here is the same one that we're using here. So, but I want to use a different section. So this one I use the larger deer um, in the center. So I'm thinking that maybe I'll use, there's a smaller deer here, and I can use it here as well. So... I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys like this one or did you like this one better? I think they both would look nice. I just think that this one, I mean, it's just me with liking bold colors. I think that, um, I think this one just, it's just more striking and, uh, it's gonna look really nice with the, the gold, um, with the gold outlines and stuff like that. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead with this. So I will just going to try cut the washi tape here so I'm just going to get it approximately to where I need it and then struggle with taking the backing off <laughs> so there we go and we're just going to center it on our mold or sorry on our ornament so there we go. And one thing I had noticed, and it may not bother anybody else as much as it bothers me, but I do know that when you're working with the washi tape, that especially when you're using the white backgrounds or anything with a white background, that it's almost see-through, especially when you uh, tape it onto a... Um, a darker color or just something that can actually show through it. So here you can actually see some of the glitter and the, what I've done, you don't have to do this, but what I do sometimes in order to get around this is I actually double up the, um, the washi tape. So I actually, you know, try to find another section that's the same or sorry, the another piece that's the exact same. And then I'll just literally lay out, layer up the red, the washi tape. And it just gives it a double layer. Now, you don't definitely don't have to do this. And another way around this, if you don't want to be like me <laughs> and be a little bit lazy, is um, you can just like paint a strip of white or just put some white on the background here. So then the white will show through. But I'm not patient enough for that, generally speaking, and I don't want to wait. So I'm just found that this was an easier solution. Now I know this does double up the washi tape in terms of you're using twice as much of it, but for me it's a quick solution for what I'm trying to do here. So there we go. Let's just press that down a bit and you can just see, you can just see that that, it just makes it much more clear. You can actually see the deer much better than before. So, so we have that. And now I'm just going to quickly go in, I'll go into a quick time lapse where I'm just going to trim off the edges here. And I'm just going to do, oh, you know, just like I do in my, on my coasters where I just create kind of a wavy line top and bottom, because you can leave the straight line if you leave it. I prefer to have a bit of a, a wavy line, more of an organic kind of look. So, um, so we'll quickly just do that in a time lapse and then we'll come back. Okay, so we have our little ornament here with our washi tape on it. So now I'm going to go in with our gold uh, serenade relief. And again, this is just a gold acrylic outliner. 
If you don't have access to this and you want to see what other alternatives there are, I do have another video that where I tested out a whole bunch of other alternatives and I posted them, um, sorry, in another video. So I'll uh, link that up above here so you can see what other alternatives there are. Some of them are you know, much more easy to find compared to this. I know this product sometimes is a bit more difficult to find or some people have said it's expensive in their areas. So definitely check out that video if you wanna see some alternatives. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some gold lines just outlining like that and these don't need to be super smooth because it kind of has that geode kind of feel or a kintsugi kind of feel which neither of them are super smooth they can be a little bit you know rough and uh, wiggly so all right so we have that line and then what i did with these coasters as you can see is i added a second line here as well as a line along the top where we're going to drill the hole so and then we just fill that in with glitter so we'll go ahead and add our second lines like that and along the bottom here like that and then along the top like that super quick so there we go now we're gonna let this dry uh, we don't need to leave it to dry for too long it can be as we just don't want it to be moving um, or still liquid so leave it for about half an hour or so we'll work on the other things and then we'll come back and finish this one so we'll put that aside and then we'll work on these two cuties okay so we're ready to start on these two and these are both like i said they're little dishes and i will be adding um, either, you know, some sort of drill hole either on the top here, oh, we can see that on the top here or on the side here. At some point I'm going to find to actually add a little hole so this way they can hang. And the same thing with this. I think I'm going to do it so the hole is up here. Doesn't really make sense to do it that way. So I think we'll do it this way. And I just use a regular drill with a, with a bit and just drill a hole right through there. So we're going to be doing that. But first, I want to add in some decorations in here. So I want to do something different that I haven't done before and I hope it works <laughs> because um, I haven't tested it. So we're trying it out here first. So what I want to do is make these into little candy dishes. So what I have is the super cute um, little, um, their little sprinkles, but they're candy sprinkles. So I have, these are from Countercultures. So I don't know if you can see them. This one is gingerbread hugs and candy kisses. It's little sprinkles. So there's little gingerbread houses and snowflakes and different things in there. Um, this one is called Dilly Dallies. And you can see they're just little, little candy. They're so cute. Like the little, those little mints, I think, that you get around Christmas time. So we have those. I'll just dump the whole bag out. So we have those there. And I have these ones here, which are, they called Tasty Twirls. And they're lollipops. Look how cute. Honestly, look how cute. Like, so, so cute these little lollipops here so we're going to add in a couple of those and I also have um I'm not sure if I'm going to add these in but I have these popcorn sprinkles which like seriously they look exactly like popcorn I mean they don't feel like popcorn they're hard but um look at that they look exactly like popcorn so we have some of those as well and lastly I have these. Now these I got from Glitter Babes here in Canada. So, and they're just a mix of like little chocolates. Like it's the same thing. It's just like, they look so real, like little cookies and little chocolates, white chocolates and different things. So we're just gonna add a whole mix of these into our little dishes here, just to make them look like little candy dishes. Um, so, a little bit of information about, you know, about my Christmas tree is for the, you know, since I've had kids, um, well, for 
for many years now, every year I'll buy new ornaments for our tree. Just I'll add like one or two or sometimes three ornaments to the tree every year. It's kind of tradition so that we just have something, you know, new for the year on the tree. And uh, the last few years, and I don't know if there was just a trend that was happening, but I have been buying um, candy or sweets um, themed ornaments. I have um, ice cream cones and cake pops and a gingerbread house and uh, I think there's lollipops. There's just, there's so many cute, I actually, my kids bought me a Starbucks cup. <laughs> so we have a whole bunch of little food candy themed, um, really colorful uh, ornaments. They're all beautiful. These, you know, these type of colors, these beautiful uh, pastels, but then some brights in there as well. A lot of pinks and purples and blues. So it's just, our tree just looks like a candy store. It's so cute. So I wanted to kind of create something in that same kind of idea because this would fit perfectly on our tree. So I may not be able to buy new ornaments this year. So I may actually just end up adding these ones to our tree, which I think are going to be super fun. I think the kids are going to like them. So, all right. So now for the next step, what we're going to do is we need to attach these to these um, trays. Now there's a bunch of different ways we can do this and um, hot glue probably is one of the better ways to do this so that you know you just stick them down and but because we're doing some glitter um, this finer these fine little pieces just kind of sprinkle them in I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is gonna be using my gloss varnish just because also I, mean, I think probably one of the better ways as well to do it is to actually pour a little resin um, into the dish and then just kind of you know put all your pieces into the dishes and then just let that cure um, and then or if you have possibly UV resin that's another way that you could do it now the one thing I want to caution about UV resin I don't know 100% for sure if this is true but what I've heard is that one-to-one -one regular epoxy resin and UV resin don't really like each other that much. I mean, they will kind of stick to each other for a while, but after a while, they may they won't really adhere, so they will detach over time. So, now I've heard that. I don't. I have never tested it to be able to say for sure that that's my experience, but that's what I've heard. So in that case, it's something I probably wouldn't try. Um, if you guys have different information about that, feel free feel free to let me know in the comments whether or not it's something that you've tried and you, you've had success with or if you can verify that that's true, that they don't like each other. Um, so like I said, so the best way, one of the better ways is either through hot glue or by pouring the same type of resin, which is I used as the one-to-one -one in here, just a thin layer and then sticking everything on and then um, letting that cure. That's probably one of the better ways to do it. But because I want to talk to you guys while we're going through this, I just decided I'm going to use my gloss varnish and I'll let that dry. And if I feel afterwards that I need to add a little bit of resin in there just to kind of really hold them in place, then I'll do that. But just for placement and just for the sake of being able to show you my idea for what this is going to look like, we're just going to use the gloss varnish. So just know there are alternatives here. So you can choose what you think is best for how you want to um, if you decide to create these how you want to do it. So we'll just, um, all right, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my gloss varnish and I'm just going to, for this one, I'm going to put it in the center because this is a round dish. So I think our items would normally be in the center. And for this one, the items seem to like, seems like they would actually dip down a bit to the down the bottom half of this shell so we'll do the same thing here and we'll just add a bunch and then we have our brush and we're just going to brush that kind of around and this does dry perfectly clear so it shouldn't have any issues with uh, being able to see this um, just like we've used it you know many times before on our coasters and our boards and everything else we don't usually have an issue with this drying clear and if i needed to go in and add resin afterwards that still shouldn't be a problem so We'll do the same thing here. All right. The only item I, the, I mean, like I said, these may not stick 100% because the gloss varnish, like I said, is a thinner layer. So I may have to go in and add more resin. So um, especially with these bigger items, maybe it's going to be more of a concern. So, but first we'll do is add in 
some of our little flakes. And like I said, we have gingerbread men, or sorry, gingerbread houses and snowflakes. So I'm literally just going to sprinkle those in. Okay, so we're back with our arabesque ornament here and we're ready to add in some glitter. So what I have is I mixed up some of my Dura Clear Gloss Varnish with this Silver Stiletto Glitter, super pretty, from Laura's Art Corner. So we will, we just mix that up here. So you can see I just made a bit of a medium paste and then we'll literally just brush it on in between those lines. So we'll go into another quick time lapse so I can just show this to you quickly. Okay, so there we go. And again, this glitter from Laura's Art Corner, their, her stiletto line is just so sparkly. Like, I don't know if the camera does it justice of just how sparkly it is. So it's super cute. All right, so we have that. We'll have to let that dry. And one more thing that I'm going to do on this piece before I am done with it is I'm going to just add a bit of gloss varnish to the washi tape. Now, this step you don't have to necessarily do, especially if you decide that you want to resin over the entire ornament um, to kind of seal everything in um, because it's an ornament and it's not going to be something that you know is going to be handled very much I don't really think it's necessary because the gloss varnish does have some level of protection especially with the glitter and things like that and the Pebio acrylic is not going to go anywhere like it's perfectly fine the way it is so we don't have to necessarily seal this in resin. If you choose to, you definitely can. Um, we would do it the same way that we would normally do coasters where, you know, you put liquid latex on the bottom and then you could just pour your resin over top the whole thing once this is all dried up, obviously. So that is op an option if you choose. So that's something that you want to do. I'm personally not going to be doing that because like I said, I don't really think it needs it since it is an ornament and this way we can actually can enjoy the different textures that are happening here on this ornament. So what I'll do instead is I just do want to seal the washi tape a little bit and with for that I'm just going to use the same gloss varnish and just do a quick um, just layer of the varnish with a brush over it and this will seal in the washi tape so it's a little bit more protected because washi tape is just paper, so we do want to protect it a little bit more. Um, again, you don't have to do this. I think it would be fine if you didn't, but for me, the gloss varnish too also just brings out the colors a little bit more. Similar to resin, um, if you were top coated, it would do something similar. So it just helps with that as well. So we'll let all these dry and then uh, we'll just come back in the morning. I'll let you know what I decide to do about these two little dishes here. Um, and then, you know, we'll get them all, you know, drilled with their little holes in them and we'll get their ribbons added and then we'll kind of see what the finished look is once we're all done. Okay, so we're back. It is the next day and everything has dried. And uh, actually, after I turned the camera off, what I did is I did go in and add a little bit more of the gloss varnish here. So I didn't, and I just kind of, created it made sure that the gloss varnish was kind of pooled a little bit under some of the bigger items and I wanted to see if that would work and guess what it did look it doesn't fall out <laughs> there 
they're completely solid in there. So, so then th that ended up working and I didn't need to go in and add any more resin. So that ended up being a decent solution, at least for what I was trying to do. I mean, obviously if you wanted to use one of the other options, 100% I think those would be fine. So I just wanted to show you guys that this option did work as well. And and also I did add the strings to them. I did add my holes and add the strings and even a little bead to kind of finish them off as an ornament. And I was thinking even before I added the little hole that these would even be really cute just as table decorations or maybe even for uh, place settings. You know, if you want to give a little favor, a little gift for everybody at Christmas dinner, or, you know, if you have a Candyland theme, you know, or something like that, um, there's lots of options here that you could use them for. But I just thought they turned out super cute. So I love how those ones turned out. And then here is our arabesque. And it's also so pretty. I really like the colors on that one. And of course, you saw our little snowflakes. So there we go. So we did, again, add it in our holes. And everything is ready to go hang on the tree. So... Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video and that you like these ideas. Maybe it inspires you to kind of create something similar or maybe it's going to spark a new idea for you to do something. And um, I just thought they were super fun. And especially with things like this one here or even decorating some of these, um, you know, after you do the resin part and you just want to go in and add the candies, you could definitely have your kids or nieces and nephews or anybody come in and help because we're not using any more resin once we've actually created the dish. So, and if we just do the gloss varnish method, then there's no harmful, um, you know, fumes or anything like that to worry about with kids. So it's definitely a fun craft idea for, for little ones too, if um, you want to do something like that. But anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and like and comment um, just because it does help out the channel a lot. And I am, you know, trying really hard to create great videos for you guys. And so if you like them, please don't forget to subscribe and like. And if you can share even, do that as well. So thanks so much, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.